What's up everyone? In the last video, I got a comment like this one and I wanted to address it because I wanted to show you a great thing that I used and I wanted to give you a personal touch on how exactly I use it. So I want to show you today how you can memorize pathways and also show you a different way of learning anatomy which has proven immensely helpful for me. Both of those in today's video. Let's go! All right, so for context, today I want to talk to you about the image occlusion add-on. Uh, this is the website for it. All you have to do is type in Anki and then image occlusion and it will pop up. Click on this website, go all the way down, and you'll actually see this code that is for downloading. One of my favorite parts about Anki is that there's a bunch of add-ons you can add, and they are phenomenal. And this is one of the greatest ones. So the, this is a free add-on. Copy this code, control C and copy it. And now open up Anki. This is Anki, the lovely Anki. And now what you actually want to do is um, to add any add-on to Anki, go to the tools section right up here, go to add-ons, and then it's going to say browse and install. And in this, in this, just copy and paste that code we just did, and it's going to download. When it says download, it's going to say download successful pre's restart Anki, press OK. All right, so now you quit and you want to reopen it up. So I'm going to just, you know, type in Anki again. And here we go. Right, so now, okay, so this add-on can actually be used for two things. One is to memorize pathways, as someone asked in the comments of the previous video. But the second thing this um, add-on can be used for is actually to memorize a lot of anatomical structures and for anything that requires a lot of brute force memorization. And I'm going to show you how to do all of that. And I'm also going to show you my pers personal experience with this and what really works and what really doesn't. First and foremost, I want to show you how to use this to learn pathways. The first pathway I have pulled up is actually the G-Protein IP3 pathway. Let's say you want to memorize this pathway. It doesn't always have to apply to this pathway. It can be any pathway, any pathway that's even on a lecture slide that you have to randomly learn. Any pathway can be learned through this technique. You just need an image for it. So let's say you want to memorize this one as an example. First and foremost, you want to take a screenshot of whatever it is you want to learn. And in, in, um, in a Mac, that's Apple Shift 4. Um, and when you do that, you can go ahead and take a screenshot of it. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this. It made that cool sound. When you take a screenshot of something, you want to make sure you know where it's saved. Almost inevitably on a Mac, the screenshot, when you take it through the method I just told you, will end up on the desktop. You just want to make sure you know where it's saved. But in this case, I can see that it's on the desktop. So now, I want to go back to my Anki. Now that I'm in my Anki, the first thing you want to decide is where does this pathway go? Let's say I learned this pathway in week two of lectures. So I want to go to my week two lectures deck, and I want to add it there. So you want to now go to week two lectures, and now click add. When you click add, you'll see that this gives you the option of making closed deletion, which we talked about last time. Watch that video up here. But if you have already know how to do that, let me now show you how to make the image flashcards. So now when you click this, you'll get this pop-up. The image we want to pull is this one. So we want to double click here. When we click this, the image will be pulled up. So you'll see right here, we now have an image. Okay, we want to decide what parts of this image we want to memorize. And because of that, you'll have to be really strategic. So let's say you wanted to memorize that this was a G-coupled protein receptor. You can make sure that the image emoticon is over this rectangle, and when it's over that rectangle, you can now slowly block things off. So in this case, I want to block off that that's a G-protein. I want to block off that this is phospholipase C. I want to block off that this is PIP2 and diacylglycerol. I want to also block off the fact that this is the endoplasmic reticulum, and I want to block off the fact that this is calcium. And so now I've blocked off all the stuff in here that I think is important for me to know. And so that is going to be converted into flashcards, but will not be converted into flashcards until you do this last step, which is at the bottom here. You'll see that there's multiple options. There's hide one, reveal all. There's hide all, reveal all. And there's also hide all, reveal one. Um, each one of these is a little bit more difficult to explain, but I will tell you this. The one I use the most is hide one, reveal all. What that means is it will create one flashcard for each of these images and everything else will be revealed. So let me give you an example here. So when I press hide one reveal all, it just says in this lower right hand corner, lower left hand corner, eight cards were added. So what exactly are those eight cards? Well, let's go see. Those eight cards were 
these. So this is the first card. It actually just blanks out the fact that like it's going to ask me, what is this? And I will have to say, okay, this is a G protein couple receptor. Do I know that? Well, okay, let's move on. The next one will be this. This is a G protein. They will not always be in order as you add more cards. Anki will mix them up, but because we only have eight cards in here right now, those eight cards happen to be in order. But if you had much more cards in here, it would definitely not be in order and um, you'd have it random. So now let's say you made a mistake and you're like, I don't really like this. I want to change it up. If you want to change it up, you just go to browse. You go to where you saved the card. So in my case, it was under neurology. It was under week two. And in this case, each one of these cards, you can see at the bottom here. Let me pull this up. You can see what's blanked out. So in this case, the thing that was blanked out is probably in the middle of the image. It might just be this IP3 channel. Um, and in this case, it's probably this calcium messenger. But the point is, let's say you don't like any of these cards and you want to delete them. You can totally just delete them like this, okay? Um, and now let's go back and nothing's here. Let's re-add cards, okay? Let's say instead of hide one, reveal all, you wanted to create something else. So in this case, let's say you blank out all of these things again and um, you do hide all, reveal all. That makes four cards, but what four cards does it make, you must be wondering. So let, let me go show you what four cards it makes. This makes all four of the things we just made, all four of them will be blanked. And now when I press space bar, all four of them will be revealed. This is also a great learning tool if you really want to challenge yourself and really force yourself to memorize everything without getting into any context to clues. The reason I don't like this as much is because when I'm learning, I like to take baby pieces. I like to actually use context clues to learn about the blank. And then what I like to do is synthesize everything at the end. So I don't actually use the hide all, reveal all feature that much. But if you guys find this useful, I, I encourage you to experiment and see what works for you. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. And I think we only have one last one again. So again, as usual, if you ever want to delete anything, you can always come back to the browse go here and delete. Um, so now let's uh, let's experiment with this last option, which we haven't experimented with yet. Um, the fact that you can hide all and reveal one. This again, in my personal opinion, is the least useful. And when you do this, again, let's just create an experiment here. Hide all, reveal one. What happens here is the fact that all of them are hidden, and then when you reveal it, you'll only reveal the one that is highlighted. And this is the less, like least useful, in my opinion, because this gives you the least information. All it tells me is this is a GPCR. I don't know anything else I blanked out, and so when I'm trying to piece things together, it just might not work. So now I want to show you how to use this to learn anatomy. It's also very simple. Again, let's just say you happen to have this photo in your lecture slides, and your professor's like, you have to know all these bones, which again, I do. For med school, you need to know all of these bones. So what I did recently is I took, um, again, we do the same thing, control shift four, take a picture of this, and it's gonna be on my desktop. Let's make sure, yep, that picture is right here. I'm gonna make an Anki card for it. Let's say it was in week two lecture where I learned this, and I'm like, damn it, I have to memorize all of this. I am going to take this, and this image is now imported. So look how I have everything blocked off now. So when you're doing anatomy, I highly recommend you use the hide one reveal all or the hide all reveal all, okay? Depends on how comfortable you are. When you hide all reveal all, you'll see the images. All of them will be hidden. When you press spacebar, all of them get revealed as we showed earlier. But, but as I said, I'm gonna tell you about my personal experience. My personal experience is the hide one reveal all always works the best for me. And the reason why is what I'm gonna show you, right? When I study this, I made 13 cards now. When I study this, I might be trying to figure out this image in the top left, but the good part is I'm going to be able to passively absorb whatever else is here and learn that implicitly. So I can say like, oh, this is the frontal bone. What's behind the frontal bone? Or like what separates the frontal and parietal bone? Hmm, I think that is the uh, coronal suture. Right? So when you say that, you actually am like, or can actively think about these questions in your head and actually answer them. And when you answer them actively like that, it actually helps you. Okay? And so in this case, I was right. So let me move on. And this is the parietal bone. And again, the only reason these are in order is because these are the only cards in the deck. When you have more than these cards in the deck, they switch off and it actually works out pretty well. But if you only have these, it doesn't work that well. So you want to make sure you add a bunch of cards. But the point is, when you're doing anatomy, I like the hide one, reveal all option. Even when I'm memorizing pathways, I like the hide one, reveal all option. It really helps with memory. And 
let's say you memorize all of this stuff really well, then what you actually want to do is to try the hide all reveal all option. You can try that or honestly, it might just be easier for you to draw a skull and to physically draw out each of the bones as you remember them from your memory or as I said with the pathway to actually draw the whole pathway out synthesize it on a piece of paper. The flashcards help you piece things together. The piece of paper will help you synthesize everything. Again, this has really worked for me. It works like a charm. And I promise you, if you keep this up and do it every day, it will work for you. And so that pretty much sums up the image occlusion add-on. But to really make sure this video is different, I wanna make sure you guys see something in action. So I'm gonna now shift over to my real Anki and show you just how often I use this and how I use it, because then you have some context. And we're back on my Anki. Again, please don't get overwhelmed by any of this. Today, I just want to focus on the image occlusion add-on. I'll go over other details on how I've tried to optimize this later on, but one step at a time. So I use the image occlusion add-on the most in anatomy. So let me show you examples of it. Here's another great image occlusion. I used a hide one, reveal all. And in this case, all of these things really do help me. When I see the fact that this is the superorbital foramen or I see the lacrimal bone and I see the ethmoid, I say, okay, the ethmoid and lacrimal bone are right next to the nasal bone. And so this is a hide one, reveal all. So in this case, it's not actually a structure that's blanked out, it's actually a level. So again, hide one, reveal all really helps because it gives me context. So I see here it's a cranial nerve level, and so right here is also looking for a cranial nerve. And if I'm looking at this, I'm looking at it and I see this is the bifurcation of the carotid artery. Specifically, it's a bifurcation into the external and internal, which happens at the C3, C4 level. And you'll see here I was right and I can move on and that's what makes image occlusion great. You can use contact clues and really facilitate your learning. Yet again, another hide one reveal all image occlusion. And in this case, it's talking about the three thyroid veins, which has a great context clue. And in this case, I can see that this is the anterior for anterior perspective of the thyroid. I can see that this is the superior thyroid vein. So this might be the middle. And so that really helps with context clues. And eventually when I get to a point where I feel really comfortable with all of this, I will actually redraw the whole diagram on a piece of paper separately and synthesize all of it together. And believe it or not, it actually really helps. So hopefully based on these real life examples, you guys can see just how useful this is for me, how much I'm learning, and I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.